So today we are diving back into the case swap Sephiro build. So last episode, we made a huge step and got the engine and trans completely bolted up and in the car. Now there's a lot of question marks with this because this is a Nissan Sephiro, shares a lot of S13 parts, but it's not an S13 and we're using an S13 kit. So I did swap an S13 subframe in, uh, but everything else is Sephiro. So I didn't know for sure that it was gonna fit or if it was gonna work or not. And we checked off all of those question marks. It's in, it's officially bolted up. Everything fits as it should. We had to make a little modifications, but it's done. It's mounted. It's good to go. So now we gotta move on to the next biggest step, really kind of the singularly biggest project on the car, I would say. And that project is, you guessed it, wiring. So <laughs> wiring is intimidating for a lot of people and we are going kind of to the extreme. Instead of buying, you know, a stock harness with an adapter plug to run kind of a plug and play deal, we are building our own standalone engine harness. The reason we are doing this is because we can isolate the things we need, we can take out the things we don't, we can add other things we need, we can just set this up and build it to be exactly what we need it to be for our uses for this specific engine in this specific car with exactly what we wanna do. And that's why I chose to go this route. Um, we also decided to go with Haltech, so I've wanted to run some Haltech stuff for a very, very long time. And I hadn't really had a project that, that needed all the capabilities that Haltech has, and we finally do. This car needs it. So we've got their Elite. 1500 ECU, let me open this stuff. I haven't even opened this stuff yet. I've been waiting for you guys. You're here, we can open it, let's do it. Satisfying feeling. I'm not gonna go through and list off the seven million features and inputs and outputs. There's a lot to know about standalone ECUs and they're definitely not all created equal. Some have more inputs and outputs. You might not need that many outputs. It gets complicated, that could be a whole nother video. Uh, but basically this thing's a unit. This thing can do everything we want it to do. One of the coolest features that I'm most excited about this, not only does it do drive-by wire, but we can set up drive-by wire cruise control. With our K-Series and our Sephiro that didn't even have cruise control, we can have freaking cruise control. Now that is gonna be sick because again, for those of you who don't know or are new to the project, the idea for this build is to build a drift car that is super comfortable on the street. Something that you would be willing to go drive two hours and you wouldn't be like, nah, I'd rather drive my more comfortable truck or whatever. Something that, that is fun to drive, performs well, but is also really, really comfortable and streetable. And streetable is hard, man. Streetable is a lot harder than raceable <laughs> to, to an extent. So anyway, we're trying to make this thing very streetable and Things like drive-by-wire cruise control are gonna allow us to do that. So anyway, that's the ECU. Beautiful piece of machinery right there. I did cut the seal and look at this one. I couldn't help. You know, guys are taking forever to get here. I, you know, it happens. Boom. We have their seven inch digital display. Nice, oh man, you just, you gotta feel it in your hands. It's a freaking nice unit. It would be hard to get all the information we needed on the stock Zafiro display because it's not a newer car, it doesn't have CAN bus. So we're gonna add some dang technology to it and we're gonna mount this beautiful seven inch display in there so we can keep it on everything that's going on all at one time. To tie it all together, we have their, I think this is a Pro Series wiring harness. So this is basically a pre-made harness that we just have to terminate into connectors. So let's say these are our coolant temp sensor connectors. We would take, these are not even close to the right connectors or wires, but cut these, put our plug on wherever it needs to go, loom it, and we're done. So the hard part's done for you. It's all pinned to these connectors. All the wiring's there. A lot of the important stuff is labeled. Relays, extra relay slots, fuses. Boom, boom. So we basically got the base we need to make this easy. We just got to, uh, again, connect connect the dots. Got to connect from A to B and uh, get all the links right and do all that. So that's what we're doing. That is what the plan is. Wiring in our beautiful new Altec 1500 digital display. We also have a wide band kit, very important. So that is the plan. Stanley's. Now, before we can even start with that, first starting point is diving into the old wiring and getting out what we need. We're going to be cutting this all apart and putting it on there. Now we also have a lot of stuff we need in this harness, which is kind of our old engine harness, but also integrates to the chassis harness. Like this is the engine stuff, and then that's the wiper motor. So we basically need to split this down to none of the engine stuff and only the chassis stuff, because we're gonna have to integrate between the two when we build our new harness, and we just need to minimize all this excess crap that we're not gonna be using anymore. So first order of business, we have the K-Series harness out. We need to get this harness out of the car. Now that would normally be a super easy, I locked it, operation, but there's one thing I realized when I went to start on this that I did not think about before. This car has a bolt-in roll cage. 
Now they go, like, oh, whatever. Why does it matter that it has a bolt-in roll cage? Well, because I want to pull the dash out because it would be easier to get to all this stuff with the dash out. But to do that, I got to pull the dang cage out. So I'm going to try to avoid doing that. I don't really need to mess with anything under the dash. Like we're not stripping that wiring out. We're not taking any of the AC stuff out. We're trying to keep all that. So I'm hoping I can get to and get everything out from down here. That's what I'm going to try to do. So uh, now that you know the game plan, let's dive in, boys. me out. Ah, there we go. We got our JDM flare. All right, definitely got a lot better access now. Working hunter dash is never, never a good time. <laughs> I think we've got everything done on the inside. Oh, jacking this far up is not easy. Need some wood. Anyway, I think we got everything done on the inside to pull the harness through into the car. On Nissans, they like to route through here and then up and over the wheel arch. So we gotta kind of take the wheel off and try to shimmy it out of here. <laughs> this new M18 mid torque unit. The first Milwaukee Impact I got was a mid torque. I still have it. I've used it to change wheels probably 500 a thousand times. They came out with this new one. This thing is beautiful. Probably my second most used impact. The most used one being the uh, Stubby 38s. Oh, that's right, these adapters. Actually, the right home centric. We can, yeah, cool. Disconnect this sub harness. Alright, half the battle is done. Now we just gotta get it through this side. You can see how it comes out here through the firewall and then tucks up and then goes into the engine bay. This is a big problem with Nissans when you start older Nissans. When you start lowering them, putting bigger wheels on them, you end up rubbing your wiring harness. It's a big, big 240 thing. Same on this car though. So we are definitely gonna try to come up with a better routing when we build our new harness. That is for sure. All right, let's see if we can get this thing the rest of the way out. Ta-da! Success. Basically, we want to get this harness stripped down, get rid of all the engine crap, since we don't have that old RB20 anymore. We don't need any of this stuff, but keep the stuff we need, like our, boom, wiper motor connector. So, uh, Let's clear this stuff off, get to cutting. Well, we have gone from this to this. I know, it's still a lot of spaghetti, but I'm fairly certain we don't need a lot of this stuff. This does go back into the harness under the dash, which is why I wanted to retain it. That's where our ground, so we got our wiper motor, and then that goes over to this plug that goes under the dash. But then another wire goes over to this plug that goes under the dash. We have reduced our maintain out of the stock harness pile down significantly. So now what we need to do is start planning out our wiring of our new ECU. Got you all dirty <laughs> doing the little slap thing. That's what we're working on now. So before we can start planning out the wiring, we gotta mount the ECU. So we need to go find a good location to mount the ECU and run the harness through. Again, I'm gonna try to avoid 
running it back through here where the wheel is. There's rub marks from the tire already right there. So again, if we tucked it right up there and then cut over, maybe we could clear it, maybe it would be all right. But I'd prefer to come in somewhere else a little closer to the engine and clean it up some anyway. As far as mounting the ECU goes, now that's going to be probably even more of a struggle because there is not a whole lot of real estate down here since we're retaining the AC and the heat and all of that stuff. Building a streetcar like this, where you're trying to keep everything, you're trying to integrate everything, you want it to work like a normal car, a lot harder than building a race car like this. This is cake. This is so easy. You're just running new circuits. Boom, headlight wire. Boom, freaking... Fuel pump wire, boom, 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 cake. Inputs and outputs, simple stuff. You don't have that much going on in here. I mean, as you can see, there's virtually no wiring in this car. And this car is not done well, but you get the comparison. This is a lot trickier, and we have a lot more stuff to work around. So I'm going to scratch my head a little bit and try to come up with a mounting place for this ECU and try to start getting it mounted. All right, something I want to try before we start messing around too much. I'm going to hook the battery back up and just see what all does and does not work with all of those dash plugs removed. All right, windows work. AC works. Hazards seem to work. Yeah, all that works. Instrument cluster lights work. I won't know if that works. That's working. AC is not going to work because it's not plugged in. Wipers obviously don't work because we have that plug. So we know that's not going to work. So we got a door ajar. Excuse me? Okay. Uh, <laughs> so we've got a brake light fluid level low, which it is low. Door open. We might not need any of that stuff besides the wiper harness. We might not need to reintegrate any of that. The speedo or the tack, because we're gonna have our digital display here. Oh, let's see if the mirrors work. Yep. See if our folding works. Oh, yep, folding works. Well then, power locks. Yep, huh. Well, it seems like just about everything that we're gonna need in this car still works without anything integrated back into the chassis harness from those plugs that were down there. It's basically plugs, you know, came off the ECU wiring harness and went up in there. So we will need to connect the wiper. Let's try to connect the wiper one without any of the other wires. This is a good way to figure out what you need and what you don't need so we don't go through a bunch of wiring diagrams for no freaking reason. Let's see if the cigarette lighter works. Yep. All right, so I'm making some assumptions here. I'm thinking. All right, basic diagnostics. Assuming what wire went where, it didn't get us there. So we are gonna have to look at the schematics. We almost made it easy on ourselves. We got everything else working. As far as I know, everything else works without this. The wipers are the only thing that needs to be integrated here that we gotta figure out, which in the grand scheme of things, not bad. All right, this is where, oh, it's gonna be tight. Oh no, we got room above for the connectors. This is where I wanna mount this guy. It's kind of uneven though. I mean, we could do the typical mount it on the firewall, but I mean, that's almost a better spot for it, isn't it? I just, because it's a street car, I don't wanna worry about people getting in and out and kicking it with their feet. I don't know, <laughs> I thought I had this figured out. <laughs> Just want to make it nice and clean. I mean, that would be clean. We just have to build a bracket. I don't know. We're going to pick one and start making a bracket. <laughs> All right. Head scratching over. <laughs> I'm going to mount this here. I'm going to mount the fuse box here, which would be a nice, easy to access location for the fuse box. Wiring will run out. All of that's bueno. And then I'm just going to build a, a little sheet metal cover for people's feet to go on. As much as I don't want to do that and it feels jank and it feels like a freaking cheap way out, I know, I know, trust me, I know, but I could not think of a better location. Now we need to start figuring out a hole through the firewall where we want to do that and uh, kind of start routing everything. All right, well, funny story. 
Last night, I decided to fix my faucet. So this is the kitchen sink faucet. This thing is nasty, corroded, and it started leaking. Presumably from somewhere in here, it was leaking down. Uh, so when you turn it on, it would leak. And this thing's kind of junk anyway, it needed to be replaced. But it's not just like that I wanted to replace it. I would be more annoyed if I just wanted to replace it. I had to replace it. It was leaking, couldn't use the kitchen sink. So I was like, cool, I'm gonna replace it at night so I don't burn daylight when I should be working on the cars. Right? This is home ownership things. For those of you who want, want to know what you're in for. <laughs> I mean, it's great, but there's these things. So, faucet I got had different fittings on it. When I was taking everything apart, these were like the fittings hooking up to the other one, and one was seized on the copper, which is twisting the copper on the faucet. So, I went to take it off here at the uh, shutoff valve, and it broke off. And uh, me being new to... Uh, working on plumbing in a house, I didn't shut the water off to the house prior to it. I shut the water off going to the faucet because I was like, cool, we're working on the faucet. Should have shut the water off to the whole house because when that broke off, we had a geyser from right back there. Literally, I flooded the kitchen. I mean, it was rough. I put my hand on it, luckily Chrissy was here. I'm like, shut the water off. And she like looked at me confused because she didn't know where the water shut off was. I did, luckily there's like a spigot you can close on the entrance to the house. So we switch, I run out there, I turn the water off, get back in. I mean, it's crazy how much water ended up in this freaking room in that amount of time. So I got shot back in here, <laughs> cleaned it up, uh, my neighbor Bill came over to give me a hand just to make sure I was headed in the right direction on fixing it. I have to have a T because there's one valve that goes over to the dishwasher. Put a longer piece in on each because the new faucet, so this is like a compression union like this where it would clamp on, you know, with a little barrel. That's the thread that the new faucet was. So I just put some straight ones on these like quick connect dealios. Throw it on there, boom, boom. I haven't tested it yet. I'm kind of scared too but uh, hopefully it is fixed. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, if you wonder why I didn't get as much work done in this video, this is why I've been spending the last evening and morning uh, doing house repair. <laughs> what a mess. And on top of that, it's Christmas Eve. So I'm like, I gotta get this done in the morning because everything's gonna close early and I feel bad having Bill come help me because it's freaking Christmas Eve and what, what a mess. What a freaking mess. Hopefully it's good, we'll find out. I gotta, I'm gonna let that freaking glue dry as long as I possibly can and then uh, test her out. But uh, yeah, for now, while we wait, and slash in general, we can get back to work on the cars. But what a mess, man. What a mess. Stuff everywhere. Oh, also, while we're in here, a little update on Sandy Sands. She uh, took the holidays off, so I've been doing the office work. And she was handling, right, Sandy? She says she's itching to go back outside and supervise, but little guy's been doing a good enough job. He hasn't, but don't tell her that. Anything you want to say, Sands? Anything? No. No? Oh, go away. All right, well, you'll see her after the holidays. Masking tape is good for this because it's not so permanent. It doesn't leave a ton of residue or really much of any residue behind. To use it just to keep wires nice and tight together. Obviously, electrical tape would be better for properly looming. That's not what we're doing here. Just trying to keep from having spaghetti everywhere. We'll get spaghetti later. All right, I'm gonna try to route the harness through the factory way. Looking at it up close again, kind of hate the idea of it. It is right in the danger zone. However, there's not really any other good way to come through the firewall because since we have all the factory under dash AC stuff, there's, that, that covers the whole firewall unless we go all the way over to the driver's side. It's not a great place to route it, but it is the factory place to route it. It's supposed to be a street car. Ugh, decisions. This is like what takes the longest about building a car, for me at least, is freaking decisions. But anyway, we're gonna try to route it this way. We're just gonna see. We're gonna take a gander. So, uh, start getting this loom pushed through. That would definitely work lengthwise. We can get to the furthest point up here. Doesn't look too bad here. We have a rubber grommet that we'll use here, but I gotta get rid of the last bit of this stuff. Not too bad. We could easily plate right over this and just make it removable in case we need to get to this. So, so far, 
not too bad. I'm gonna go to the inside and see about mounting the fuse box. All right, so here's our plugs. It should perfectly reach our ECU with everything mounted up. Fuse box, one mount, run about here. All right, check this out. As I was just messing around making sure I could get the cover off, which I can, I'll show you, it's a little tight on there. I was making sure it cleared. There was another bolt hole at the top that perfectly lined up. Talk about freaking easy mode. Did we hit the easy button and I didn't realize it? So sweet, that, and that's a good fuse box mounting location because that's kind of similar to where one would be OEM. So now we're gonna actually move on to mounting the uh, ECU, I was just excited about that. All right, gotta be honest with you guys. I almost, almost self-tappered this. And if you know me, you know I'm a big fan of roof nuts, doing things proper, not self-tappering it. And I almost did. And I'll be honest with you too. I would have if the dang self-tapper was long enough, but it's not. <laughs> I even bought these ones because the other ones are too short. So I had two chances. Change my mind and do this the right way. And I'm only doing it the right way because I was forced. My plan was to self-tapper it for now and then use those as pilot holes to drill and rib nut it. But would I have done that? Who knows? Anyway, now we got to get ourselves our rib nut kit out and uh, toss some rib nuts in here. Do it proper. We're doing it proper. Though not by choice. All right, well, just kidding again. M6 bolt too big. I got an M4 rib nuts. Sick. Let's do it. Don't have the M4 attachment for my rib nut tool. So I got to get some. I have a quarter 21. We're going to do that. So we can't mount the EC right now. We'll move on to more pressing matters. More wiring. Yay. <laughs> All right, so next up is going to be building out the harness. So we've got the whole loom in here. And now from here, we need to start splitting things off to where they go. Kind of getting them routed about where we want to route them cutting them to length so that we can pull the whole thing out and build on the bench before we can do that though we need all the connectors which are on the other harness more harness splitting you guessed it all right so here is our k-series engine harness so let's get the shrimp All right, got the K-Series harness pretty much completely stripped down. I left some of the wrap here and there just to kind of keep things directional and not full spaghetti like this section here. Make things a little simpler. So now we have everything we need. We have our Haltech base harness. We have the stuff off the Severo harness we need. And we have all of the stuff of the K-Series harness to attach to the engine. Presuming nothing's missing, let's hope. However, as you can see, it is freaking dark out and we are realistically out of time for this episode. I definitely wanted to make more progress this episode. However, this is one of those things I knew was gonna be kind of a slow moving project just because I'm not super familiar with this, building an engine harness. Now I've built plenty of chassis harnesses. I redid the one on this car. I built the entire chassis harness for Miata. I've done that plenty of times and it's pretty easy. I've built parts of engine harnesses, but I've never built an entire engine harness from scratch. And it looks super intimidating. I mean, look at all these wires and we've got shielded wires for the crank and the cam sensor. It looks scary. And because of that, I've never done it. I've always avoided it. I've always bought a pre-made harness or found some way around having to build an engine harness. And I considered doing that with this project too. I really did. I was like, oh, I could get a jumper thing to a stock harness and then try to clean that up some. But I realized like with every other thing I've learned when it comes to working on cars or houses or anything, things are only scary until you know how to do them. Things are only intimidating or seem hard until you know how to do them. Some stuff's still hard, but once you learn, you know. So we'll struggle through it once, you struggle through it twice, and then you know how to do it. And then you're like, this is easy. And then you'll look back and go, man, why did I even worry about this? Why was I afraid of building an engine harness? It's cake, it's just this, this, and this. I mean, with the chassis harness on my Miata, that was the first car I built the entire thing from scratch using a PDM and all this stuff. And I was same same way I am now, intimidated by it. I didn't want to do it, I wanted to avoid it. And I did it and now I'm like, dude, this is a piece of cake. Like, this is so easy. Why, why did I ever worry about doing this? Like, it's so, it's so simple. So I know this will be the same way, but I know we will have some struggles along the way. We'll make some mistakes, we'll learn. It'll take us a little bit of time. So it is what it is, but at the end of the day, once we're done, we'll know how to do it. And then we'll know for the next time and the next time and the next time. And man, learning, there's nothing better than learning and being able to do more things yourself without having to rely on anybody else. That's always my goal. So anyway, long winded way of saying, that's gonna be it for this episode. Next episode, we will be building out the harness, however long that takes us. So hope to see you guys for that. But for now, it's gonna be it. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, goodbye.